What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Adobe Live. Uh, my name is Voodoo Val uh, and I'm going to be your host again for the design off. I'm super excited to kind of jump back into things for today. Uh, thank you everyone in the chat who is joining us. Uh, I see Sam, I see RB, I see Becca, I see Chad. It's good to see you folks. Thank you all for joining us. Um, and I'm here today for a second time with my new friend, Lisa Marie. How are you, Lisa? How's it going? I'm doing great, Val. Yeah, really, really excited to be here and kick off day two with you. Awesome. I'm, I'm really stoked that you um, are here and we're going to jump into some more uh, color palette uh, kind of, uh, I mean, we're both kind of doing landscapes, but I guess uh, this, our theme for today um, can be uh, interpreted however you folks in chat like. Um, I'm going to briefly go over kind of the prompt that we're working on for, day, for today and tell you folks how you can get involved with us. Um, so yesterday what we worked on was uh, Lisa actually chose a super awesome uh, color palette for us, which you folks can actually find uh, in the Photoshop Discord. It's pinned in the Design Other channel, so you guys can actually download those images. Uh, it will have have the colors on that page uh, for you to either sample in your own program um, or it actually has the color codes listed so you guys can get the exact codes if you prefer. Um, thank you Sam for those links. Definitely check out Lisa's work on Behance and check out her website huh. for sure. Um, and yeah, we've just been kind of working on uh, landscapes, not uh, only according to our color palette, but we've kind of come up with this theme of where you'd rather be. Uh, so I know a lot of people are in quarantine right now. A lot of people are living uh, a lot differently than we were several months ago. And I know some of us are probably missing uh, vacation spots and missing maybe visiting uh, loved ones and things in other places. And so we're kind of using our creativity uh, to channel uh, some positive vibes and some love into uh, pieces of artwork that represent places that we miss, that we would love to see again, um, and, and the like. So I'm really excited about that. And maybe before we kind of jump into um, a recap of our art yesterday and uh, day two of our work, um, Lisa, why don't you do an intro for yourself, kind of let anybody who wasn't here yesterday know a little bit of about you and the kind of art that you like to do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Lisa. My um, business name is Made by Lisa Marie. So that's pretty much how you can find me on Instagram or wherever else. But um, I'm a freelance illustrator and graphic designer. And I've done a lot of work mostly in the outdoor industry over the years, but I've been kind of merging into different um, other, uh, other different industries. But basically everything um, kind of revolves around like merchandise so whether it's like graphic tees or i just did a, a children's book um snowboards uh d different things like that lots of lots of like merch graphics so nice nice um i'm gonna i'm gonna attempt to take a page out of your book today too because <laughs> yeah. i started a I started a painting yesterday um, I went the fictional route for where I'd rather be, and I'm doing a painting of Tatooine uh, from Star Wars. But I'm gonna do like a minimalist badge of sorts, something that could be like a like a badge or a sticker or something like that of um, of the same scene as well today. So I'm hoping that goes well. Um, why don't we take a look at your art wait. that you made yesterday, um, and then maybe you can give us an idea of what you're gonna jump into today. Cool. Yeah. I'm so excited to see your badge. I think you're going to kill it. I'm but, excited um, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, so I just, um, so this was, uh, I, I did a little homework and kept working afterwards after the stream. So, and I, I added in some color and I also did a little tech or texture background in Photoshop, but this is basically what um, I finished with yesterday. And then um, today I also did a little homework um i have a little a little sketch and this is kind of i like to sketch things out um nice. in real life and then cut them out like a third grader and <laughs> arrange them so this is kind of like a behind the scenes look at my process no but, i love um... that i i it's, it's cool to see like the process uh behind everybody's work and i can yeah. tell you i was not expecting you to to cut pieces out and arrange <laughs> them and everything this is really really sick yeah, thank you. It, it just helps. I'm such a tactile, 
tactile person. So mm -hmm. just being able to move it around, whatever, arrange it. Um, and so today I'm going to do more of like a road trip type of theme. So, and I'm also going to do more of like badges, which is kind of my like MO. So I'm, I'm excited to get into this. Nice. All right. Um, well, the last thing I'd like to um, kind of point out to everyone before we jump into it um, is uh, I know Laura just posted in chat that uh, she has submitted her work and I believe I saw it um, on, on Twitter. Um, and so just to give everybody a quick reminder, you can all participate um, in our design off today. Uh, we're doing, like I said, I've got the theme up here where you'd rather be. So illustrating places that you'd love to be right now with our color palette. So I have the color palette that I can pull up here so you can get an idea um, of the colors we're working with. But you can also download the, the color palette via the Photoshop Discord and it's in the hashtag design other um, channel um, and it's actually pinned to that channel so if you go up to the top right and hit the pins button they will be there and you can download them and it has the colors and the color codes for you um, so you can check those out and then towards the end of the stream we're gonna pull up Twitter and Instagram uh, and take a look at your work so we have the hashtag Adobe live design off um, up on the screen for you folks so you know where to send your work in um, and we're gonna take a look at all of the awesome stuff that you folks have created along with us so I hope to see your work um, towards the end of the stream Stream. And without further ado, we can kind of jump into some some nifty painting and stuff today. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get into it. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna start out today with my all time favorite thing now, which is uh, clipping masks. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jump in with some clipping masks, and I'm gonna start sampling Thank my you. colors and uh, and throwing them in to uh, to my piece here. Nice. Yeah, I think um, I, I would love to know um, of all of the tools that you use and the things that you do. What is like some of the some of the tools and features that you just cannot live without? Um, for Adobe Fresco specifically, or just like in general? Well, since you're using Fresco, let's let's talk about Fresco. Like like when you're when you're designing in Fresco, what are the what are what are a few things that uh, you just love and you're like, man, if I didn't have this, I don't know what I do because clipping masks are that for me for sure. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. I I feel really really passionate about the vector brush. That is like, man, I so appreciate the fact that you can draw in vector and like I'll, which is what I'm drawing in right now. Um, so I'll show you. I can zoom in indefinitely and none of the resolution gets lost because um, it's nice. point based. So super, super helpful when I'm designing different like merch that needs to be um, all different sizes. So it's great for printing and not having to redraw anything. Like the resolution is always going to be nice and crisp. So um, yeah, definitely. That's probably my number one favorite thing. Yeah, I, I think um, the I actually did use the vector brushes for a, um, a a job one time, and it wasn't something that I was super familiar with because when it comes to illustrating and things, I'm predominantly like a Photoshop fresco kind of gal. I don't I don't have a lot of experience like using vectors and things like that. And so when I jumped into Fresco and I started using the vector brushes, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like vector that I can understand. And yes. I, I <laughs> love it. Like it's for me. <laughs> yes. Like you don't have to like break your finger with a mm -hmm. mouse, like trying to draw it out in uh, Illustrator. Like you can just just go for it. Draw it. Yeah. It's like it's like vector that I already have the know-how and the knowledge to apply it to a piece. So I was like, this, oof, this is good. This is very yes. good. Um, so that, and then I think um, one of my, like my main go-tos that I'm also kind of using today is um, I'm huge into blending modes. Like if I didn't mm. have blending modes, I don't know what I'd do. Um, I'd probably yeah. be stuck only painting in color, which I know a lot of people do that already, but I love kind of just doing my own thing um, and, uh, and, and painting in grayscale first so I can get a good idea of my values and stuff. And the fact that I can do that and then apply color later really makes me super happy. So 
Yeah. Is there a specific blend mode that you are like, if I could only do one blend mode for the rest of my life, I, it would be this? I think uh, I'm going to choose three because I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can oh. choose just one. Yeah. I, I, I always go to um, overlay, multiply, yeah. and like a color dodge. Those are like the three that I, that I love to use because um Sometimes I use like hue or color, um, but for the most part, those three are like my go-tos. And then I like to add um, highlights in painting in color afterward. Um, yeah. Those are like my some of my, my, my favorites, definitely. Those are good ones. Yeah, I feel like the, well, the color dodge is usually like, that's always kind of like a surprise. Like you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, when, you, <laughs> when you hit that, that's a fun one. All right, I've got my little uh, planet. I'm going to call this Tiny Planet so I can find it. Tiny Sun. Boom. And then I'm going to make my texture for this other uh, sun. The clipping mask. And I'm going to rename this Lorge. <laughs> there we go. I don't know, like I, I'm, I haven't always been super good at organizing my layers, um, but now whenever I do organize my layers, I feel like if I have to share my file with anybody, they're going to be like, you're a strange girl because oh, the these name. titles are so weird. Um, I did name, like, I feel like Tiny Sun is a good name for the Tiny Sun, but I also was debating between that and like Lil Baby. So I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I feel like so. Do you, you normally organize your layers now? Um, or? I, I I organize periodically because I don't work well when I'm like constantly worried about where mm. my layers are and what they're called. But I take a break like every thirty minutes and just kind of rearrange stuff so I keep organized as I go. Yeah. Um, also, Catherine is asking in the chat where is the color palette I mentioned? If you join the Photoshop Discord. Uh, which is, uh, I think actually I can pull up the Discord link. I might have this. One second. Do I have this? I do. Um, if you go to bit.ly slash PS Discord, making sure that P and S are capitalized, um, it will take you to the Adobe uh, Photoshop Discord server, um, and you can jump in there. There's a channel on the left-hand side called Design Other, and I've pinned it um, in there. So I, I posted it yesterday. You'll probably be able to see it right there. And if you can't, there's a little uh, thumbtack icon in the top right. And if you click that, it'll pull up all the things that have been pinned. The color palette should be right there, and you can actually download it. Um, so it has the image for you, so you can sample the colors, and it also has the color code, so you can be very precise. Uh, let me scroll through and um, check out what everyone has been saying in chat. Uh, Steve Festus Casaboom is in here, guy with the coolest name around. <laughs> Let's see, Reverb Mike in the house, good to see you. Uh, Cornell, it's good to see you. Uh, Cornell says, there's nothing worse than getting the message already taken when you type your nickname which worked on every other website while creating an account. I, I know how you feel. Luckily, um, there's only ever been like one other person that has like Voodoo Val, which I feel like is a missed opportunity because it seems like a, I think it's a pretty cool name. I don't know about you guys. I think it's pretty lit. Um, oh, yeah. But she spelled it differently than I do. So I was like, oh yeah, getting all the usernames. <laughs> Um, and then I see, uh, let's see, everybody talking about um, adding values and things, kind of like the old masters of oil painting values first, then color. You know, I, I, I haven't, um, I, I actually haven't seen a lot of like old masters do this and not, not that they, they don't, it's just like all the people I've ever taken cues for, for painting this way have been like, like, I feel like the digital masters of our time. Um, hmm. And so I've seen a lot of people, when I saw people doing digital paintings and I was like, oh, I could do that, what? Um, so I started and um, now I know that there is there is a technique for that in traditional work and I can't remember the name of it. It's like a fancy French term um, that makes it sound way more sophisticated than I do colors later. 
but it's 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 like a cool it's a cool name. oh like the underpainting um oh shoot yeah there's like a whole there's like a whole word or phrase yes. for it and it sounds really awesome is it how Re rembrandt painted that's amazing now that i know that i'm gonna have to do more research on him and that's i think that's one of the things like yesterday we were kind of talking about um like our 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 strengths and things we may need to improve in. I feel like I should do mm -hmm. more master studies and and know more about art history than I do cuz my my art knowledge at this moment is like people that paint nowadays and all my favorite video games. That's <laughs> that's my my wheelhouse. Yeah, you should I'm such a geek when it comes to art history. Yeah. I love that crap. I, I think I took art history classes in in school too and I just yeah. I don't know I don't know what happened maybe I was drawing what I was supposed yeah. to be Classic. supposed to be studying that could be what what the deal is here okay I'm kind of getting colors in for my little planets my little suns here and then I am going to be uh using some blending modes so let me turn all these clipping masks on and we're gonna see what we got uh i think i'm gonna move i don't know let's see move this behind find where that is oh quick tip what i just did here is i needed to find quickly which layer this big glob of gray paint was on um and so i just um held control and clicked on the layer um and then boom it's uh it's where i it, it selects the layer for me so i don't have to like scroll through and hide and unhide a bunch of stuff looking for where the heck it is so if you ever run into that issue because you didn't organize your layers like i don't sometimes um that's how to do it <laughs> Oh, that's good to know. Um, so is is Photoshop probably your your go to favorite Adobe app that you work with? Absolutely. I, I it's it's starting to be a tie though between Fresco and Photoshop. If I'm being is totally it? honest, yeah. Yeah. Um, since I started using Fresco, um, it's it's actually ended up um, making up like fifty percent of my workflow. Um, yeah. because I can like sit on my couch or go sit outside and like start a painting and get everything. Yes. And then if I, if I want to, I can move to desktop, but sometimes I don't even move to desktop. Sometimes I just stay in fresco totally and, and, uh, leave it at that. So, um, it's been, it's been pretty, pretty wicked being able to draw in fresco. Definitely. Yeah. It's super nice. What, what's like one of your favorite like features in fresco that you like wouldn't hmm. be able to live without um i think in fresco one of the things that i love first of all is that um i can bring my favorite brushes that i use in photoshop into fresco mm -hmm. that's been amazing um i really i'm starting to explore a little more with the live brushes so that's been yeah. really awesome i feel like i can get a lot of textures and things that would be harder for me to recreate in um photoshop because in not that you couldn't but I'm, i find that when i use those brushes that do extra special things um in fresco it's way quicker for me to just get a cool effect than to go through filters and go through um different steps in photoshop um totally. i like also being able to just like click where i want to click and um i can like zoom in and out with my hand because my cintiq that i'm using is an older model and does not have touch capability mm. So having um, having Fresco on my iPad has been really fabulous because I, I kind of have that freedom there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I feel like I was never really, I never, I tried different like Cintiqs and like Wacom tablets and I just never could quite get into it. Like there felt like, like there's something about just drawing straight on top of the iPad, which just feels like so just like I'm drawing in my sketchbook like it just, yeah. it just feels super familiar you know it's, um definitely it's been a cool cool app you know I was, but yeah hmm. oh sorry oh no 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 go for it I was I was actually <laughs> mostly talking to myself <laughs> oh <laughs> 
Yeah, I was gonna say the the live brushes are super fun though. Um, when I was doing the children's book, that was like mostly, well, I guess I did mostly like a mix of like live and pixel because it, it was supposed to look kind of like a watercolor um, painting. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just, those are super, super helpful. I think I finally got my colors in here. But I think I need to add more blue because I got like the our tan colors thrown in there, but they could definitely do with some more of the blue from our color palette. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna start doing that. Let me erase around the edges. I think I could have also maybe done this a lot cleaner, um, but I know that I want to make like a little badge later on. So I'm trying not to um, be too precious with things. We talked about that as well. Like, yeah, <sighs> trying not to to do that. It's so tough. I'm trying to practice what I preach here. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and I'm going to. Ooh, that's cool. You ever like hit a blending mode real quick and then all of a sudden things are different it's and you're like, like what? Yeah. Yes. It's that's like, looking surprise. Awesome. This is really neat now. Bet you didn't expect that. And I'm like, no, no Photoshop. I, I didn't. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, let's add some blue to this. Oh, actually, before I forget i'm gonna pull up my colors i'm gonna grab like this yellow color and i'm gonna come in between all these random blobs that i swear are clouds <laughs> I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put like some lighter pieces peeking through Ooh, that'll be cool yeah, little like some... sunbeams or something or yeah like just like little um I don't know. Like I call them, I call them hidey places. <laughs> I don't know. Hiding if, places. Yeah, like yeah. Because you know how like sometimes when people paint clouds, there's like just little parts where the clouds overlap, where you can see there's like brighter areas. Mm, I kind of mm -hmm. want to do um, some stuff like that a little bit. Um, I'm just cool. trying to find the best way to do it. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to go a lot faster than yesterday. It's wild how fast like an hour ends up being. Seriously. You know, it's like I can I can get like so like just like, oh, I got to make sure that line is perfect or I can be like, oh, well, we'll do it quick. And yeah, there it is. Kinda, yeah, lay down the colors. So besides um, going to different uh, locations within Star Wars, are there, like, if you could, I know obviously the world is, uh, you know, kind of shut down right now, but like in, in a daydream, like where, where else would you go um, that's like in the world right now? Hmm. I think I would love to go uh, to Fort Bragg. California. Oh, yeah. It's like on the coast and um, in Fort Bragg, on the on the way to Fort Bragg, if you're coming from the north, there is a gigantic fern forest. Mm. Oh, that's and cool. I'm talking like these ferns are taller than people, like wow. huge ferns. Um, and you drive through and the, the roads like wind around the mountain over and over again. And, oh um, there, yeah, it's like, it's like some of the most beautiful, like scenic driving, um, I've, I've ever seen. Um, and so I would definitely, if I could, I would definitely like to, to visit there if I could go That's anywhere. Amazing. Yeah. Um, where, where is Fort Bragg? Like, located? It's, um, is it? I think it's close. Yeah, it's definitely, I think it's definitely like, it's been a lot, a lot, a lot of years since I've been there. Let me look. I'm going to, oop, I just ripped my earphones out. Hold on. Um, I'm going to look it up on a map. Because I can tell you how far north it is. 
It's like, let's see. Yeah, it's farther north than Sacramento, but it's not as far as Reading. Um, oh, okay. It's like, it's almost like sort of level with Reno, but just on the very edge of the, of the continent. And okay. uh, it has, it, a lot of people have probably seen uh, things from Fort Bragg and didn't know. Like they have, Fort Bragg is the home of Glass Beach. So all the glass mm. that gets like worn smooth by the ocean ro- uh, washes up onto Glass Beach. And a lot of people like buy or import um, glass like that for like making jewelry and things like that. And um, yeah. there's a lot of caves. Um, there's a lot of different beaches and stuff. And it's a, it's a really beautiful place. It's a cool place to be. That sounds amazing. It's definitely um, a place very dear to my heart. I used to go there when I was a got when I was a child um, mm. with the uh, grandparents and things. So yeah, if I could if I could choose to be anywhere, I think I would definitely choose going there for sure. That's really cool. I love that. Thank you. What about you, Chat? I would love to know. Um, what you folks are working on, um, how you guys are interpreting the theme, um, and if you're not working on the theme, uh, just a little bit about maybe places that you can't wait to go um, (laughs) once everything uh, is uh, different. Uh, Also, Viperish, welcome in. It's good to see you. Sakosma, it's good to see you as well. Welcome in, welcome in, everybody. Uh, Reverb Mike is saying Maui. I love it. Ooh, I've never be been cool. to Maui. Me neither, but I imagine it's amazing. I imagine it's pretty nifty as well. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not really like a, like a tropical, vacay kind mm-hmm. of gal. I, I, I grew up around a lot of mountains, so whenever I do travel, like to get away, I always like to go to like cold mountains, <laughs> preferably yeah. with like redwoods. You know, like that's, that's cool. kind of my scene. Yeah, that's funny. That's definitely how my husband is. Like, he actually, he really wants to go to Antarctica. Like, that's like what? a big dream where I'm like, that is actually my worst nightmare. That sounds like, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that sounds like an actual nightmare. Like, that sounds like, like a horrifying thing to do. <laughs> but, I mean, to each their own, if that's each their really own. what he wants to do, that's cool, yeah. I guess. Yeah, but he's definitely like that cold weather mountain. I... I definitely I like it for like a little bit but then my I just I don't think I have like good circulation or something like my fingers get all numb and mm. it's kind of painful not so an I'm, Antarctica I'm, girl for sure n- <laughs> not not in the Antarctica <laughs> but no, thank uh you. yeah I definitely love the mountains I think um I don't think I could go to Antarctica though just because um, I, I read too much like Lovecraft uh, uh, short stories and stuff, and mm-hmm. that's supposedly where all the monsters are buried under the snow. So uh, go to Antarctica at your own peril. Can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah can't see? do it. I'm, I'm not going to be responsible for uncovering uh, a- ancient horrors. So I I mean, you should tell him that if he goes there, he could possibly stumble upon some things he's not prepared for. So. You know what? I see. I also, I also feel like if I told him that, that would be like, oh, let me go, like, try to find them. Well, you know, I'll like, bring he, a camera then. I'll bring. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's. He's like, let me film the the next adventure. Yeah. So. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just thought I wouldn't be a good friend if I didn't at least say so. You know, just to warn you that. that <laughs> totally, I appreciate it. Thank well, you. Well, I won't be going with them, so. All right. It's okay. I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm going to add this blue. It's not happening the way I want, but I'm going to noodle with it. I'm going to keep going. Uh, Maybe I'll do with like the green. See what the green does. I did like kind of forget about the green. I didn't, I, I like noticed yesterday that was the only color I didn't use. I, I think I got so kind of sucked into the fact that we have warms and cools. Yes. You know? And I was Blue like, oh. And orange. That's all there is. Yes. Yeah, I feel like the green is usually just like a little accent or something in um, most, of, most of the pieces I'll work with.
kind of I kind of made a mistake, and then I'm like, I like this though. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's looking awesome. This is what we'll do. My head's been down this whole time. I'm like just looking up. I <laughs> love that. Thanks. Such a dramatic sky. I I kind of like all the texture. I think if I had more time, I would spend more time doing certain things. But for the sake of just kind of getting on with the piece, I'm just going to leave it at this. And then um, I'll jump into the badge in like five or ten minutes. Totally. Da -da. I'm gonna get like my little sharp brush and sometimes what I do is um, I'll, I'll lay like a like a bunch of globs of paint down and then I'll get like a sharper brush and I'll come in with that eraser and I will just start like shaving pieces off of it instead of like mm. drawing everything exactly where I put it you know um, almost like etching it out exactly yeah like That's um, cool. You know how people make um, stamp bricks and things? Yeah. Like that. That's really cool. It definitely, it gives it, it's like drawing with the eraser. It gives a different, different look. For sure. Um, grab a more of this color. And I'm gonna put it under here, like that. So this year I've been, or I don't even know if it's been the whole year, but maybe just like the last like several months, I've been trying to push myself to do more like hand lettering, even Ooh. though I feel like super inadequate at it, but I've always thought it looks really cool. So I'm pushing myself to do a couple different hand lettering pieces in this and we'll see how they turn out. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think it's always kind of a cool experiment, even if things don't necessarily go like extra well, just to, mm -hmm. if you have something in mind that you're like, I would really like to do X, Y, and Z, just kind of go for it and see where yeah. it takes you. Yeah, absolutely. What are um, maybe uh, another thing or two that you think at some point you would really like to, to try that you haven't done yet? Oh man, another thing that I, um... I feel like so intimidated by, but I think it's so cool, um, is animation. Ooh. I'm like, just having like just some movement um, to the pieces, it just gives so much personality. It's so playful, so fun. But, and then I'll like look at like After Effects, and I'm like, oh man, I need someone to, well, I, I need to just sit down for several hours and just study really and learn it. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, I know it would be so cool, but it's like a whole different language right now for me. But that is definitely a goal um, one day. Yeah, I, um, I, 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 I do dabble in After Effects a little bit um, and I've done animations in it, but oh, I cool. kind of found like my happy place for animating in general. I actually animate in the Photoshop timeline a lot. Yeah, that's... Okay, I've I've heard about that where there's like a, um, I, like I don't know like how much you can really move things around as much. Like, is it a little bit less control? But or um, I mean, have, I like, do like I do like frame by frame animation. In okay. It. So I make like a lot of promotional gifs and stuff for um like my Patreon and any stories that I'm writing. I'll do like a portrait of one of my original characters and then I'll animate them blinking or something like that, you know? Oh, that's Just really so it, cool. it moves while I post it on Twitter and catches people's eyes, that sort of thing. That's um, super cool. But uh, I don't know, I, I've never really tried to do more than that, um, than just making like a quick animated GIF. So I don't know. Um, there might be some people in chat though that have a little more um, familiarity with it. Is anybody in chat a fan of uh, doing the... Uh, Photoshop timeline animations? Anybody uh, have any experience with it? Maybe you guys can share some stories about the kind of stuff you guys make. Um, let's see. Yeah, is there anything that like you've been itching to learn or were like, man, I, I wanna like, you know, s devote some time to figuring this out one day? Um, I really have like a series that I wanna do at some point. 
um, I want to do like a series of um, video game controllers from all of my favorite consoles. I want to like illustrate them oh, um, cool. and then animate more thoroughly those illustrations so that they're like a longer looping uh, animation of like the buttons mm-hmm. pressing and like it moving around and like characters kind of swirling around them. So um, I've done a few illustrations for it already, ju- just nothing that's like crazy enough that I have shared, you know, because right. they're not like at that point yet. But yeah, I've been I've been kind of trying to work on um, cool. doing something like that. Do you have like a favorite um, video game console that you're that's like your favorite? I think. The console that I really played the most when I was a kid that has the most sentimental value to me is the Sega Dreamcast. Um, Nice. I played so many games on the Dreamcast, um, and those games, like, then inspired me to do so much art uh, going forward that I think it's definitely, definitely has captured my heart, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Steve Fested, or Steve Festus, Steve Festus Kossaboom said... Um, that he has made a few gifts uh, in the Photoshop timeline, uh, which is super awesome. And Cedric, uh, the one and only in the chat, good to see you, my friend. Um, Cedric said, After Effects is my true love, way more controlled than in Photoshop. I, I would assume as much, yeah. Um, and then Sucosmos says, Hasn't played with After Effects in a while. Um, Steve says, There's this Australian guy who is a wizard with timeline in Photoshop. His name's Bill Hope. Maybe I'll check them out. I'll actually, uh, hmm. I'm going to leave a little note for myself. And I will, I will check it out. Totally. Yeah, that's, that's definitely high in my to-do list is to, to learn, learn the ways of animation. Okay, I've done my little, um... My little badge sketch, I think. Ooh, I want to see. I'm kind of, I'm going to like shrink it down and I'm going to put it in like an actual shape. Nice. Let's see how that goes. Um, and then we are uh, coming up on the end of our stream here at some point. So um, I wanna do like a quick reminder to anyone who is uh, thinking about posting their work so we can check it out. Um, if you folks use the hashtag Adobe Live Design Off, uh, we will be able to pull up your artwork on Twitter and Instagram at the end of the stream, give you a little shout out, um, kind of highlight and showcase your work and say thank you for participating with us. Um, so if you guys would like to do that, uh, we'll probably think about doing it pretty soon uh, because I think we'll come to a stop here in about 10 minutes. I can't believe it's already been an hour. That is just bizarre to it, me. It flies. Oh, man. Oh, I love your badge. It was, I'm, I'm just being able to see it now. That's really Yay. cute. Yay. So good. And I'm going to put uh, some text at the top here, too. I'm going to write. Uh, Tatooine. Boom. And I'm not going to use Myria Pro. I would like to use Coven. And I think that I've got my character styles thing kind of messed up at the moment. Yeah, here we go. you color like crazy yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's getting to be that time (laughs) yes indeed all right so i feel like choosing the background color is always tough it's like you know i don't know what what i'll end up with but i'll just do this kind of basic color for now yeah, sometimes I find myself in like the same situation where I'm like, what do I make like the the base vibe of this yes. painting, you know? Totally. 
All right, I am going to use some shapes and I'm gonna, I'm actually choosing background color as well. I'm gonna grab my color layer, my color um, thing from this other piece. And if I can, let's see. Huh. Let's say copy. There we go. And I'm gonna group those. Let's see if I can do this in less than 10 minutes. Moment <laughs> of truth, folks. Let's do it. You got it, you got it. <laughs> I know this is where the um, paint bucket tool becomes my favorite. Yeah. And just drop, 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 drop. <laughs> yep. Just have to make sure all of my lines are closed. grab like this color and I'm gonna do the big sun like so I Boom. love that you're making a badge that's so exciting <laughs> thank you <laughs> I'm also gonna put let me see if I can convert this to a smart object oh, and I'm gonna put a nice stroke on it I'm gonna try to use the green a lot more this time since I kind of like abandoned it in my last my last piece oh okay nice <laughs> um, I'm gonna grab this dark orange and I'm gonna make another little sun there we go, and then I'm going to make a hill. I'm going to convert all these to clipping masks so they stay inside. This is how, like, sometimes when I'm working on my own, sometimes mm -hmm. this is what it sounds like when I talk oh, to myself. 100%. 100%. Like, for sure. Yes. I swear this is not just for the stream. I go just like this in all of my, in all of my private projects that I have yet to show people. It helps. It's like, I don't know exactly why, but it, it really does. For sure. Yeah. And it's, I just like, I feel like I'm in control and I know what I'm doing. Mm hmm. That's good. Clipping mask. And oh, then no. let's do another one. Do select. Oops. This is kind of a random question, but um, since I'm working on like a lot of red and green right now, I'm like looking at all these complementary colors. Do you mm -hmm. have a favorite complementary color scheme? Um, I really love um, like purple and maroon with like sandy tones a lot. Ooh, and I yeah. also really love um, like pearl, like rose gold, like and mm -hmm. and like a pearl color mixed with um, tones of like forest green and gold as well. 
Um, okay. And I, I think like pearl and rose quartz kind of colors look really good with like a deep plum color as well. Yeah. Oh, nice. I like that sort of stuff. That sounds really cool. Thanks. Is there a lot of different, um, yeah, a lot of colors that I don't typically use. So that's always fun to hear like what different, different color schemes people like to work with. I usually work with like darker stuff too. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's like my my personal favorite like signature type thing um, right. that I will go for. Uh, so I've kind of had to learn like, okay, I like purple. I'm going to do purple for like literally everything. So right. maybe I should figure out like some different kinds of colors to put with purple so that I don't always end up like, surprise, another black and purple painting. I'm sure nobody yeah. expected this. <laughs> Yeah, surprise! <laughs> Ta-da! I know you're all totally surprised. All right, I got my... I just have to put Luke's little house in, and then I think I'm done, guys. Um, let's see. Um, Julio says, Lisa, what has been your best work, um, and how long did it take you? Um, and then also, if, if you can think of one, uh, where where did you post it so so he can see it? Best work. Um, oh man, I am not sure. Um, I feel like so. I feel like my running portfolio is normally my Instagram, um, where I'll just kind of like always constantly be posting new stuff. So you can go on Instagram at Made by Lisa Marie. Um, I did really like. I did an Adobe Live um, in May where I did like badge designs, um, oh. and I think it was. I believe I'm looking up right now. Uh, yeah, the theme was all about kind of like, almost like a like a mental health, like taking a break, taking um, taking time to to uh, stay balanced and kind of like refill up um, your own like needs so that you can keep on like you know being the best person you can to everyone else. And um, yeah. so so there's one that it was like stay balanced, unplug, take a time out. Um, so a little series of badges that. Um, yeah, that I thought were, felt, felt a lot like me, like, you know, it's always, as an artist, it's, it's like hard to make something that like feels exactly like you. And I feel like that was one of those things where I'm like, oh, that, that does like feel like me in like illustrated badge form. So nice, nice. <laughs> that's always exciting when that happens. So yeah, that feels yeah good. <laughs> totally. And it, it doesn't always happen, at least not for me, but, um, when it does, I'm like, oh yeah, cool. All right, I think I finished my Tatooine batch. I think I, Yay. I think I've done it. Let's see um, it. Oh, I, I'm obsessed. That is awesome. I think I'm gonna put like um, a little line underneath Tatooine, and then I'm gonna put a slight texture over it, like a like a paper texture or a noise texture. Also, big surprise, no one's ever seen me use a noise texture before. Mm -hmm psych um but i think oops i changed this color let's see cancel where did that little guy go there he is i'm gonna make a new one there we go and I'm gonna put him behind. There he is. Uh, and then I'm gonna grab my handy dandy noise texture. And we are going to jump into, um, or actually I think I actually have one in my libraries. Then we'll jump into kind of looking at everybody's work. Um, cool. if, if you want to, I will actually full screen you real quick and give you a chance to kind of show off um, the work that you did for today. Um, yeah. So I have you, I have you full screened up right now, so everyone can take a closer look at your work. All right, wonderful. Yeah. So I, um, I was just kind of thinking like, oh, like I, I love like road trips, especially in the summer. Um, big, big fan fan of paddle boarding. So I was like, it'd be cool to do like a little like road trip vibe. Um, I also, uh, yeah. So as you. You can see I was trying to experiment with hand lettering a little bit. I have over here the the old school um, air freshener kind of like hanging from the letters. Um, yeah, I love it. 
you know, some sunglasses with the mountains um, coming out. And um, yeah, I'd probably add a little bit more detail to this bottom badge too. Like maybe like, I feel like the mountains are getting a little lost. So um, maybe color those a little bit differently so they pop out a little bit more. But overall, I'm pretty excited about, you know, how this is, how this is looking so far. Yeah, I think it looks so cool. I, I think it looks very, like it's, it's, it's got like a nice, um, kind of whimsy to it, um, which yeah. is really nice. Um, so I'm, I'm just loving it. Uh, and then I'm gonna full screen my little badge here. I just put like a cool texture over it real quick, like a little overlay paper texture. And I think it looks pretty neat. I, I'm actually really satisfied with this. I didn't think that I'd be able to do that much um, with this, but I did. So um, it's yeah. like simple, but it's really fun. It looks um, so good. I love it. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, without further ado, I'm going to pull up our um, social media and take a look at what folks have posted because we are starting to run out of time here. So I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to go top and then latest for our challenge on uh, Twitter. We got this, um, we got one from Laura, which is the, uh, just this wonderful kind of mountain range with our color scheme, which is awesome. So Laura Seneva on Twitter, um, everyone please give her a follow because this looks absolutely fabulous. I love the texture on it. Um, I think that it just, it, it's very, uh, it's very beautiful. I think you did a lot of great stuff with the color palette. So, um, well done, Laura. Uh, and then we also have one here from Becca, and it's, I, I believe her handle is Bex Likes Horses, if you guys want to give her a follow. Um, I love that Becca actually used mostly the blues and the pink and the green. So we have like two totally different kinds of work here using the same color palette. And we got this nice like cafe coffee shop um, kind of scene going on here. And that looks really, really awesome. Um, so this is this is great. This is looking awesome. I'm gonna flip yeah. over to Instagram and I'm gonna do a quick refresh of Instagram and then I'm gonna go to our most recent ones here. Um, and I think that this one, I don't think this one was submitted for today's uh, challenge, but uh, Crazy Ember did post. And I think even though it wasn't for today, I think that it definitely goes uh, sort of with our theme and that is um, that Crazy Ember says they're missing creating uh, paper dolls they used to play with um, and I think even though we were doing kind of like places and locations that we miss visiting that this still kind of goes hand in hand with what we did so uh, they illustrated like strings of different people and different faces and stuff. I love um, that. Yeah, and I, I, I just think it looks really cool. So I appreciate you uh, jumping in and uh, sharing your, your work with us. Blake Stevenson's in the chat, by the way. What is up, Blake? It's good to see you, man. Uh, thank you so much for popping in. Um, and then I also think that uh, after um, we stream here today, I think that there's going to be some pretty cool um, Australian... Uh, Adobe fam uh, on the on the stream in about 30 minutes. So I want to make sure I say not to forget about um, them definitely come in and, and show them some love. Um, but for right now, uh, we do actually have to take off for the day. Um, I really appreciate everyone being here and hanging out. Thank you folks in the chat for stopping in and hanging out with us. Um, thank you, Lisa, so much for being my guest yet again. It was a blast. Absolutely. Yeah, this was so awesome. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Um, and where is the best place uh, to find you online so that folks in chat can keep updated on your work? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, like I was saying earlier a little bit, definitely Instagram is kind of like one of my go-tos. So it's just at made by Lisa Marie. Um, and then definitely Behance, which is um, my full name. So it's Lisa McCormick. Um, okay. But yeah, so either one of those. Awesome. Well, definitely give... Uh, Lisa, a follow online, folks. You guys can find me at uh, VoodooVal on Instagram or VoodooVal on Twitter. as the best places to find me or VoodooVal on Behance. Um, and we will have to say goodbye for now, but it's been awesome. Um, and we will catch you guys another time. Adios, everybody. Bye, guys.